Hey everyone, I'm Jessica of Oakla Roots. Welcome to my channel, thanks for stopping by. If you're new here, make sure you subscribe below so that you can keep up with all of the latest tutorials and vlogs and who knows what else I'm gonna be putting out there. Today, we are going to make a grocery tote. That's right, probably the most useful item that we can sew as sewists. So, grocery totes. I know, <laughs> there's so many tutorials and there are so many patterns. There are free patterns, there are not free patterns, there are bajillions of videos and tutorials. I get it, I know, and I'm just adding to it, but I'm adding to it for a very specific reason, because I have gone through many of the tutorials and many of the blog posts and many of the patterns, and I have bought some paid for patterns, and I can tell you from my research, which obviously isn't everything, but from my research, this is my favorite tote bag. The reason this is my favorite tote bag is because it is the perfect size, it is extremely sturdy, it is lined, and you can make it pretty cute. I mean, without having to add a whole lot of extras. So uh, we've got these uh, awesome tote bags out there, right, for grocery shopping or just, you know, for wearing day to day. And they've got pockets, and they've got accents, and they've got feet, and they've got everything. But that's gonna take a lot of time. And if you're trying to make like 10 of these in a day, I, I mean, I hope you didn't have any other plans for that day. So this one takes just a few minutes. It's super simple. It's, let's see, I've got one, two, three, four, four pieces of fabric and a strap. And actually you don't even need four pieces of fabric. You really just need two, two pieces of fabric. That's it. The reason I have four is because we're gonna cue it up just a bit, but it's not gonna add a lot of time. Don't worry. First, let me show you the super basic version of this pattern. Wait. <laughs> Hold on, <laughs> I need to tell you who, who made the pattern. I didn't make the pattern. So this is a free tutorial. It is by Pearl Soho. I'll have the link for the tutorial in the description below. They have three versions of this you can make. Easy, easier, and easiest. We're actually gonna take a little bit from each one of them to make our tote bag. Super simple. Best tutorial out there. Best tote bags. I don't do the grocery shopping in my family because I will buy all the treats. I will buy all the snacks, all the treats, all the yummies. My husband does the grocery shopping in my family and he gets a compliment on these bags every single time he goes. The baggers love it. They have asked for me to make them for him, but again, news alert, <laughs> I, don't, I don't sell things. I'll, I'll probably make them bags just as gifts because why not, you know, why not? These are the best bags. They're super sturdy. I make them for all my family. Don't judge this, this bag is dirty. It gets used all the time. But this is it, let me make sure, okay, hold on. There's, there's one side of it that's stained and I'm not gonna show you that side. Let me find the stained side. Oh no, I'm not sure now, maybe there are two stains. You guys, there are two stained sides. I don't even have a clean bag to show you. We'll have one at the end, okay. Anyways, let's just look at the dirty bag. So here it is, so we're gonna use this nice, thick, sturdy webbing and I'm gonna have a link for the webbing I use down below. This is it, this is the outside of it. What I like, look, it's got boxed corners so when you put it down, and open it up, you have a nice like flat bottom to get it all, get all your goods in there, right? So it's lined, but you don't have to birth it. You actually just do French seams and you just French seam the lining. I know you just heard French seams and you're like, I'm out. I'm not dealing with this. I'm not gonna deal with any fancy seams. I don't have time for that. French seams, it's like French fries, come on. Like French fries are not fancy. I mean, you know, whatever. French fries are not fancy. These are just French seams. Just because it's French doesn't mean it's fancy. Anyways, this is what we're making, right? This is cute, this is, I showed you the stain. No, this is going great today. Here it is, so we're gonna walk through how to do this, but we're gonna cute it up a little bit. And this one, I use canvas on all the outside, and then I use like a fun print on the inside, and then just cotton webbing, and bam, this thing is the bomb.com. Look, it's super easy to carry. You put your milk in here, you put your cans of Fruits, I mean, if you buy canned fruits, I don't do the grocery shopping. You put all of your goods, put all, I put it all in here. It's heavy, it's sturdy, it is reinforced like two or three times. I'm gonna show you how to do it. So the pattern calls for your exterior piece to be 18 inches by 36 inches long. But since we are gonna modify it a little bit, what I want is I want a contrasting strip along the top and then I want the canvas on the bottom. The reason I don't want the fancy stuff on the bottom is because first of all, the fancy material is more expensive. So this is gonna reduce the cost of making the bag. And also, I mean, I couldn't show you a side of my bag that didn't have stains on it, all right? But the stains are all on the bottom. There's no stains on the top because you are putting your bag down 
on dirty counters, maybe on dirty cars, maybe on the, you know, the concrete when you have to open the door to put the bags in. So the bottom's gonna get dirty. Let's use our inexpensive fabric on the bottom. That's gonna be super easy to wash and you know, we're not that worried about it. And then let's use our regally pretty stuff on the top where we know it's gonna be cleaner longer. So let's talk about our supplies for this project. We're gonna need cotton webbing. You're gonna need about two yards of this. We're gonna cut this into two 30 to 33 inch straps. Um, the pattern tutorial calls for two 33 inch straps. I find those to be a little bit long. So I actually make mine 30 inches long and that seems to be the perfect size for, for me. We're gonna need some thread. Since it's all cotton, I'm gonna use Aurifil 40 weight cotton thread. And I'm gonna use this in my uh, top needle and my bobbin. And then I'm gonna use Microtex needles. And these are just a little bit sturdier than maybe quilting needles or universal needles. This is just gonna help because I'm gonna be sewing through, you know, this stuff. Now, for the exterior piece, the exterior piece originally is supposed to be 36 inches by 18 inches long. But I want this to be a two-tone. So I actually decided that my bottom part of my bag is gonna be this canvas, you know, nude color. And so I cut this at 18 inches by 24 and a half inches long. And then I cut two of these top flaps. So one for one side of the top and one for the other side of the top. Cause you'll see whenever we put this bag together, we're actually gonna fold the whole thing in half. So this will be one top and this will be one top. Each one of these is 18 inches by 6.25 inches. All right, and that's gonna make it so that when we sew it all together, with a quarter inch seam allowance, we're gonna end up with an exterior piece that is 18 inches by 36 inches. And then this is my lining. I am doing a cotton lining. Now this fabric and my contrast fabric for my exterior piece are both from Hawthorne Supply Company. I'll have a link for their site below in the description. And this is just a nice lightweight cotton. Now their cotton is a little bit stiffer than most quilt cottons that you're gonna buy, which actually works really well when you're doing bags. And so this is just gonna be the lining and this is just gonna be folded up inside, nice and neat. I'm gonna go to my sewing machine and I'm gonna put this one right side down with this and I'm gonna sew a quarter inch seam allowance to this end, to this 18 inch end. And then I'm gonna take this one right size down with the opposite 18 inch end and I'm gonna do a quarter inch seam allowance here, sewing these top contrast flaps to the top and then I'll come right back. So you can see I attached my contrasting floral strips to my basic bottom. And whenever I did this, so I attached them using a quarter inch seam allowance and then just to help this stay nice and sturdy, I decided to do a one eighth of an inch top stitch. So when I top stitch like this, what I'm doing too is I'm trying to top stitch that seam down. So you can see I pressed my seam towards the contrasting fabric. So then I top stitch on the contrasting fabric just to really keep that seam from wanting to open up, you know, when you're like shoving stuff in here. And so now let's follow the pattern. The first thing we do is we're gonna press down a top edge. We're gonna press down one of these 18 inch edges and we're gonna press it down a half an inch towards the wrong side. So what I'm actually gonna do, when I have to do something like this, I like to just kind of draw it on here. And for this one, I'm just gonna use a mechanical pencil. It's a basic line, nothing, nothing too hard. And then we're going to fold it down. So I went and I pressed down this half an inch. And now what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna fold it again, but we're gonna press it down one and a half inches this time. This is gonna give a nice look on the inside of the bag. And it's also gonna be what holds pretty much the lining together. So again, I'm just gonna measure from the top, one and a half inches, draw myself a little line with my super, super fancy mechanical pencil. Should we call it a French pencil? So now I'm gonna go and I'm just gonna press down on that now. And, and it's, and you know, I just look at it and press it. So I'm gonna go press down this. All right, we have one side double folded and pressed. Now we're just gonna do the same for the opposite side. So I have that half inch folded and pressed and now I'm going to do the one and a half inch fold and press. So this is a little trick I do because I know some people can just use a ruler or eyeball it at you know the iron. 
but with a canvas like this, it's nice and like super starchy. What I do is I actually just find my line and then I just press like that. See, Ooh, we're shaking everything. Find my line over here, press like that. And I'm, what I'm doing is I'm creasing it. I'm, I'm creasing the fabric on that drawn line and I'll show you how that helps. So I just crease it. I just open it up, look at it, fold it down, crease it. Open it up, look at it, fold it down, crease it. So now, see, look at that. It's standing up. So now I just take it to the iron and I just iron it down like this. And I know that it's exactly the size that I want it to be. There's not gonna be any fluctuations in widths and it's just perfect. So if that's something you struggle with, this is my tip. This really works well with fabric that is heavily starched because it, it almost acts like paper. So that was step one of the tutorial. Before we do step two, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the easy part of the pattern tutorial and we're gonna add the lining. Now the easy part of the pattern tutorial has a pocket and also lining. I'm not adding the pocket. I'm going to add the lining step here. And to add the lining, it is super easy. I mean, this is the easiest lining you have ever added. What we do, here's our lining piece, right side up, exterior piece, right side down. So we have wrong side to wrong side. We're gonna take our lining and we're just gonna tuck it right under here. There we go, there we go. Tucked in, snug as a bug in a rug. Our lining has been added. What? Lining is done. Now we go back to step two of the easiest part where we attach the handles. Here are our two straps. We just need one for now because we're gonna attach the other one on the other side. So to attach the handles, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this and we're gonna fold this little guy in half. Find our center, crease it. So here's our center crease. Just to make sure I get a good look at this, I'm gonna do a little chalk right here. And this will just rub off whenever I'm done. So I'm going to start on the right. So I have my three inches on my chalk mark. And so this one is one, two, three inches. This way is one, two, three inches. So really I just have to attach it on either side of this. So make sure it's not twisted in any weird way. Make sure it's nice and straight. And then we're gonna tuck this in on this side of the ruler, get a clover clip, clip it in place. Same thing over here, tuck this one in on this side of the ruler, clip it in place. So this is where it can get a little tricky depending on how thick of a handle you're using. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna take this before we sew it, and we're gonna fold it up just like that, straight up. So I'm gonna use two clips this time, one on either side. Same with the other side. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run some pins along the seam right here so it stays together and then I'm gonna flip it around and I'm gonna do this exact same thing for the other side. So now I'm gonna to go to the sewing machine and I'm gonna stitch two lines on each side. I'm gonna do a quarter of an inch from the bottom part of this fold over the fabric and the handles. And then I'm gonna do a second one, a quarter of an inch from the top of the bag over the fabric and the handles. And I'm gonna do this for both sides. So you can see I stitched a quarter of an inch line from the top fold and I stitched a quarter inch line from the bottom fold. And so I included the handles and I did that with both sides. Now if you look on the opposite sides, now we have this really lovely contrasting fabric on the top, which I think this is gonna look great. We're gonna take our bag and we're gonna put it lining sides together like this. So you kind of have an idea of what your finished bag is gonna look like. We're going to 
pin the side seams together. I'm going to pin this side and I'm going to pin this side. Here's my massive amount of pins and I'm just going to go from the top. I like to start at the top so that way I know that my you know top edges are lined up. So you're pinning this, the uh, lining as well as the outer panel, we're pinning everything together. So now all we have to do is go to the sewing machine, sew so a quarter inch seam allowance down each side and then come right back here. So we sew down each side, just like that. So we're gonna take the bag, we're gonna turn it inside out. So even this side of the bag looks really cute. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and pin down these sides, and then we're gonna sew this edge down at a 5 eighths of an inch. So now we have this all pinned. We're gonna sew each side down at 5 eighths inch of a seam allowance. Now we have done our French seam. That's a French seam. It's just one seam, folded inside out, other seam. That's a French seam. Don't be intimidated. It's beautiful. So now we just fold it back out. You could be done right now. I mean, this could be your finished tote bag. If you don't wanna box the corners, you done. That could take you a whopping like 15 minutes to make this bag. So here we go adorable grocery tote bag. But I'm gonna change it up just a little bit because I like a nice boxed bottom. This gives it a flatter bottom so that when you set it down and open it up to put stuff in it, it's a little bit easier. So we're gonna box these corners in the bottom, which again is a very simple thing to do. And then we're done, we're done with the bag. So we have our tote bag and to do the box corners, we're gonna flip it upside down. We're gonna Spread these out like that. There we go, nice point. So I have my handy dandy mechanical pencil and I'm gonna take my ruler. And what I want is I want a line from here to here. So from here to here, that is two and a half inches long. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna set it up over here and I'm just gonna keep moving it around until we get to two and a half inches. And I like to lift this up so that I can see a little bit better. So there we go. From here, one inch, two inch, half inch, two and a half inches. Here we go, I'm just gonna draw my line there. And I'm gonna go ahead and pin it so I don't lose this spot. Okay, so we have that. I'm gonna do the other side too real quick. I'm gonna go to my sewing machine and for each of these corners, I'm gonna sew on this pencil line. So because this seam right here is so bulky, instead of using my rotary cutter and risk um, slicing my finger, I'm just gonna use some scissors to gently do that. Now obviously we don't wanna leave it like this because you know, that looks pretty messy. So we're gonna flip the bag inside out So we're gonna have our corner just like this. So now we're gonna do another line. This time we want it four inches, four inches from here to here. So let's figure out where that is. So here's my one. And this really is just to hide that raw edge. So there we go, that's, that's four. So I'm gonna draw my line. There's my line, it's good. I'm gonna pin it. Do the same for the other side. So now 
now all we have to do is sew along this line and flip the bag out and we done. We are done. Well guys, the Florida sunshine did not return during our tutorial. So it's a little dark in here. This is where we left off, right? Here's our bag. Okay, it's inside out. We just got done sewing together these, the seam, right, for the box corners. So now let's flip it out and see what it looks like. Oh yeah. Come on, why would you want to use a plastic bag when you could use this? Look, look at this bag. I feel like I say that every time I make something, but holy smokes, you guys, I made this. This is amazing. This is so cute. And it's so much cuter than a dirty grocery bag. I say dirty, yeah, I said dirty. I don't like plastic. This is adorable. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, look at me. I might actually go grocery shopping because I just wanna show off how cute this bag is. My mother will steal this bag today. I won't even be able to photograph it because she will take it. Beautiful, two-toned, very simple, very, very practical grocery bag lined on the inside. See that? Oh my gosh, I wanna wear this just for everything. It's so cute. So thanks so much for sticking around. It's too bad the weather didn't cooperate with us, but we made it, we made our beautiful bag. I hope it helped you. I hope you go to the blog. I am not affiliated with the website in any way, shape or form. It's just my favorite tutorial. It's my favorite bag. It is the quickest, it is the easiest, and it is the most sturdy grocery tote bag I have made yet. Check out the tutorial, use my video to help you make it as well as their pattern. Thanks so much for coming by today. Don't forget, Subscribe below. Subscriptions are big right now because that way you can see what I'm doing next. And the more subscribers, the more other people we can reach. And I need you guys to leave me comments about what you would like to see me make. I have a million ideas, but if it's not useful to you, I mean, I want it to be useful to my subscribers. So if you are a subscriber, please make sure you comment below. Please let me know. Is there something else you'd like to make that you'd like to watch somebody show you how to do it? I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna be honest with you, next week when we use pull fabric, I have never worked with pull fabric in my entire life. I am nervous. We have to use a different type of needle, we have to use a different type of thread, but it's totally out of my range of things I know and I'm not even gonna cut the fabric off camera. I don't want to know anything going into this because I want you to see if it's something that a total beginner who has never worked with pull fabric can pull off with their first bag. So give me a like if you like this video. I hope we see each other again soon. Thank you so much for watching. It means the world to me to be able to share this with all of you. I hope you have a great week and I'll see you later. Bye.